Number 80. As a general rule, MX to the N molecules, where M represents a central atom and X represents terminal atoms, where N equals 2 all the way to 5, are polar if there is one or more lone pairs of electrons on M, which is the central atom. So, for example, NH3, which has an M of N, X of H, and N equals 3, is an example. And there are two molecular structures with lone pairs that are exceptions to this rule. What are they? All right, so basically, in a nutshell, this is saying that any time that you have a molecular structure in which you have one or more lone pairs in the central atom, that molecule is deemed to be polar, right? So if I just give it to you up top here, if we said H2O, which is another example, you have oxygen in the middle surrounded by two hydrogens, so one hydrogen on each side, and two lone pairs. Since this molecule has one or more, it says it right here, one or more lone pairs, and it has two, right? One, two. This would automatically be classified as a polar molecule. So they gave you NH3 as the example. Another example would be H2O. But however, there are exceptions. Now in this case, they want two molecular structures, but in fact, there's actually three molecular structures that could possibly be an exception. Well, if we're saying that all structures that have lone pairs in the center are polar, what's the exception? Well, they would have to be nonpolar. And nonpolar molecules means that the entire molecule is symmetrical. As opposed to polar molecules would be asymmetrical. So that's the definition there. But now we just got to figure out which molecules would be classified as nonpolar or symmetrical with lone pairs. So that's when we dive into this chart over here. Now I'm can't, crossing off, you know, these four columns because it has to have lone pairs. This column, the first one right here, does not have any lone pairs. It says zero. So we can automatically get rid of these. However, I drew two of them, or I put a picture for two of them uh, to just give you some context here. So the two molecular structures that are going to be exceptions are coming from the trigonal bipyramidal electron geometry, which has a number of electron pairs equal to five. That's trigonal pyramid. They call it trigonal pyramid. I call it bipyramidal. Same thing. And octahedral, which has electron pairs numbers of six. And it's right here. Now, we want to make it as symmetrical as possible. So we're going to be looking at either these three, right, one, two, and three, or we're going to be looking at these four. And we want to try to make it as symmetrical as possible. So let's see. If I look at seahorse or seesaw, I automatically see only one lone pair here. There's four groups, but there's only one lone pair. Eh, that's not really symmetrical, right? So this one would definitely be out. We're trying to look for something that's nonpolar, symmetrical. If I look at T-shape... I have these two lone pairs, which are majoritively going in the left direction. So you have electrons on the left direction, and then you have um, groups off the center atom technically in the right direction. So electron pairs on the left, groups on the right, eh, that doesn't really make it symmetrical either. So I'm going to cancel this one out, which brings to this one. And this is one of the exceptions, linear in a trigonal bipyramidal electron geometry. And I'll show you why. If I just put these over on this drawing right here, they're saying that for anything that's linear, you just have to have two groups. So technically, if I say it like this, here's would be one group and here would be another group as to what they're saying here, X on the top, X on the bottom. And then they're having electron pairs on the three. So I'll draw the two dots. Okay, so we just need to know the, um, um, the bond angles, right? So from one group to the other, it's technically 180 degrees. So that means that anything that's going up will be automatically canceled by anything that's going down. So that makes that symmetrical. 
and anything from the lone pairs is 120 degrees. So between this lone pair and this lone pair is 120, this lone pair to this lone pair is 120, and this lone pair to this lone pair is 120. And it's basically, you know, a part of a circle, right? A circle equals to 360 degrees, 120 all around. So it's an equal distribution, 120, 120, 120. So technically, these would cancel as well. These lone electrons would cancel because they're all in the same amount. They're 120 degrees away from each other. So they pull in opposite directions, but because of their bond angles, they completely cancel each other out. So this linear would be an exception to the polar rule. So two molecular structures would be uh, exceptions. So one would be from the trigonal bipyramidal, and it would be linear. If they wanted to give an example, it just had to be a central atom with two um, uh, atoms off of it, and then just three lone pairs. So I would say something probably like, uh, let's do like X, E, F, two. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it would be, have to be X, E, F, two, and then a minus. So that would be one example. Now let's look at the other ones. So for octahedral, right? Let's see if we could get anything that's symmetrical. If we look at square pyramid, uh, I only have one lone pair down here. And there's nothing on the opposite side of the lone pair to counter it out, meaning that, you know, there's not a lone pair up here. It's actually a, a atom. So this one is out. Let's look at this one, square planar. Well, look at this. I have two lone pairs on opposite sides. So that's going to cancel out. And all of the groups are 90 degrees. And two on one side, two on the other side, they're all 90. So that would also be nonpolar. It would be symmetrical, right? And if I just drew it, you have lone pairs up top here, a lone pair down here, and then four X groups. So from here to here is 180. They would cancel out the lone pairs. This one is going up. This one is going down. And they completely cancel out because it's 180. And these are all 90 degrees from each other. 90, 90, 90, and 90. So they would all cancel out, right? And then from this one to this one, that's 180, right? If I just jumped from here all the way to here, that's 180. And the same thing from this one to this one. So this one looks like it's all completely symmetrical if we have something like that. So square planar would work. In the octahedral electron geometry, you know, uh, electron, yeah, electron pair geometry. So this one is good. So there's two of them already. There's actually one more, but let's just see if we could spot it out. Here, there's only three lone pairs. Ugh, right? That's not symmetrical. I got two on one side and one on the other. So this one is automatically asymmetrical. This one would be polar. So that means the last one has to be linear, right? And it's for the same reasons as we've done it beforehand, but just opposite. Instead of having the two lone electrons on the top and the bottom, we actually have two X groups, and then we have the four lone pairs. So it's just the complete opposite. Instead of having the X's here, you would have the lone pairs. And instead of having the lone pairs, you would have the X's here. But the, the numbers still are exactly the same. 180 from here to here, and then 90 all around. And since that's the case, linear would also work out here as well. So, yeah. So those are technically three molecular structures that are the exception to the rule. When you have lone pairs, it would be linear in the trigonal bipyramidal electron pair geometry, and then square planar or linear in the octahedral electron pair geometry. And that's it. And number 80 is all complete. Awesome job, guys. Hopefully this helped out. Let me know in the comments what you thought. If you want to help us out and the channel out, you can click that subscribe button. We thank you very much for that. We're almost at 200 subscribers. That's pretty crazy. I know it sounds very little, but it means a lot to us. So thank you so much for that. I will see you all in the next question. Have an awesome day.